Good morning. Um, I got some downloaded messages from yesterday and then also this morning. So I'm going to start with those. Um, something, someone is like, your kids don't listen. But they could very well be talking about their kids too. Like they're like, but they're just calling them your kids because you were home with them more often. Someone's like, your kids don't fucking listen. They don't listen. And they actually don't listen. They don't listen. They're defiant kids. Like, they're, they're like, rude and hostile. They don't even mean to be. Okay? They don't even mean to be. They're just like that. It's just like, oh. God, my kids are good, you know? Like, like that's what people think when they're around your kids. Like, they become grateful for how their kids are. Even if their kids aren't perfect, right? They're just like, at least... <laughs> at least... <laughs> my kid ain't doing that. Like, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Thank you. For allowing me to heal and show my kids how to be da 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 right this is how like people around you think after they're done hanging out or like done being at the grocery store that you're at or just someone's kids don't listen and it's real obvious that they're just bad kids i shouldn't say that there's no such thing as bad kids there's there's kids with no um there's kids with no routine. There's kids with no emotional support. There's kids with no um what is that called? Someone you look up to? Role model. Kid with no role model. Okay. And then sometimes there's just a karmic child. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda break that down. Okay, so you know what to do in order to kind of like combat that if if your kid if you fall in this category okay because it is fixable anything can be fixed right you just have to have the ability to be honest with self right honest with self my kids used to be really 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 whiny really whiny really whiny okay and it was something i was doing nothing the kids were doing so in order to fix that, I need to, to be really, really honest to myself as a parent. And I'm not perfect, far from it. But my kids aren't as whiny. Okay, I got some really, really, really nice kids, respectful kids. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that Anything can be fixed. You just got to be willing and honest. Like really fucking honest. You can't be sugar coating shit and saying, well, well, and then put the blame somewhere else. No, that's you. Those are your kids. Right? And then that, that father that's saying, I don't know if it was a, in, in my, in my visualization, it was a father, but it very well could be a mother. But that father that's saying your kids don't listen. Those are your fucking kids too, man. Those are your kids too. Girl. <laughs> okay, kids that don't listen. They're being like erratic, having like, they don't get their way, they're fucking stomping around. Oh, my kids still do that, but like just jokingly, right? Um, but this is because you need to check yourself. They need a better role model, right? I've had to do this. Um, and it's offensive when somebody else says it, right? It's offensive when somebody else says it. But if you take something from this, I don't care, like, even if I have offended you, okay? Sometimes the truth offends people. I don't know why. But um, it just takes something from this anyways. It's not like you have to tell anyone about it. Just internalize it, right? Get a fucking journal. Okay, check yourself, okay? If you have erratic emotions, okay, outbursts. Okay, sometimes I break down crying in front of my kids. I do. 
And I know that some parents are like, no, no, you don't do that. You don't do that. Why not? If I'm going to be emotional and I have every right to be emotional and I'm able to simplify it for my kids to be able to understand, I'm able to explain it afterwards, then they learn alongside me how to process emotions. And I don't see how that's wrong. I don't see how that's wrong. I just don't. But if it's anger, of course not. Of course not. Right? I'm going to say, you know what? I'm feeling a bit worked up. So either you go to your room, I'll go to my room. But I need to get centered and then we'll come have this talk afterwards. Right? And same with like parent to parent. If you're fucking being erratic to that other parent... Who do you have to blame for your kids being like shit disturbers, right? I remember one time me and my first baby daddy, we had a rule. If we were starting to have a conversation that was getting our tones of voice, we're getting a little bit, you know, uppity. We were, we were going back and forth a little bit. I'd be like, hey, let's go to the garage. And we fucking scream it out of the garage. <laughs> Away from the kids, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's even healthy, but like what I would do now, what I would do now is still go to the garage just in case, right? But then have like a piece of paper. There's a piece of paper. Have a piece of paper, okay? We're going to write what we're talking about, the problem, the issue at hand on this piece of paper. Okay? Maybe it's getting to the bus on time. Getting to the bus on time. Okay? And every time we want to bring each other into the equation, it's your fault. That part's your fault. That part's your fault. That part's your fault. That part's your fault. We just shift the focus back to this piece of paper. This is our problem. I'm not the problem. You're not the problem. Going at each other's throats isn't going to fix the problem. Right? And say, I accidentally, I accidentally do it. I accidentally slip up. And I'm like, yeah, honestly, though, if that, if you didn't, that, 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 okay, that's strike one. Let's try again. If that gets done again, strike two. Okay, if, and then if that gets done like again and we're really just not able to focus on this topic at hand, this issue, okay, we just got a problem with each other, then maybe that's your cue that that's not the right person for you. You guys don't want to work with each other, right? Or put a pin in it. I guess that issue is not getting figured out, right? It's not getting figured out today. And that's how you, like, stop fucking fighting. And that's how you be better role models for your kids on an emotional level. Okay. So check yourself as parents. I was a very young parent, right? As a very young parent. <laughs> yeah. I was 17 when I became being a parent. Right? A step parent. And I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Until my own. My own issues were getting in my own way. That self-sabotage shit. Right? I was just so hurt inside that I couldn't help but to be infectious and yeah I left that relationship when Parker was not even one okay but yeah like this self-sabotage shit it can it can it can last and it can ruin really great things right and you'll think that it's other people. You'll think it's other people. When it's really you. When it was really me. Right? And once I got a good understanding of that. 
it put the fear of God in me. <laughs> it did. And it made me want to do that work. And it made me want to have faith. Okay? But it didn't stop me from fucking up even more. <laughs> I'm just human. Um, okay. So check yourself if your kids don't listen. Check yourself. Be a better role model. Okay? Routine. I'm still working on this. Actively working on this. Routine. Okay, even if it's minimal, okay, these kids need breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay, preferably at the same time. <laughs> I'm really bad for that. One time we'll have, like, supper at 6. If the kids aren't hungry, we'll have supper at 8, you know, <laughs> but I'm like, I, I, I don't have, like, a spouse, right? I used to, like, I just talked, I talked to my sister not that long ago, and I was like, Taya, I feel like if I had a man, I'd be making supper on time. I'd be like, um, I'd be like trying to put like parsley on top. <laughs> like, you know, I don't have anyone to please. So, I mean, we're just having like fucking Katie and hot dogs. <laughs> Katie and hot dogs. She was like, I understand that. Like when, I, when I'm, when I'm doing like all my cooking and stuff, all my baking and stuff, all my breads and stuff. <laughs> um, she's like. I, I'm mainly aiming to please Tyler. <laughs> I'm like, see? I knew I wasn't the only one. <laughs> uh, but it's like, why is that? Why is that? Why can't we just play, aim to please ourselves and want to be a, good at making loaves of bread for ourselves to have some fresh bread and be like, damn, I did that and I didn't even do that for nobody else. Like, I gotta put this shit in the deep freeze because that's all for me. <laughs> you know, like, why is it that we need to please people? Why do we need this praise? I don't know. I don't know. Praise and blame are all the same. That's what it said in the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff because I remember that. Praise and blame are all the same. Well, then why does one feel really good and one feels really shitty? <laughs> That's the one we're going to read today, okay? We're not going to do a random page today. Okay, routine, even if it's minimal. Okay, when you say something, don't go back on it. Okay, if you do that again, you're grounded. They do it again, fucking ground them. And and if two base, days pass, they're grounded for three days, they're grounded one more day. Be strict with that shit. Otherwise, they're just going to fucking fold on you. One parent says something, lays down the law, the other parent backs that law. Okay, if not, they're just going to play you guys. They're going to play you guys. They're going to want th think one parent's the bad parent, one parent's the cool parent. When the cool parent's actually instilling really fucking toxic traits there, that's the bad one. That's the fucking bad one, trust. That's the one slacking. But they are thought of as the cool parent. The other one's thought of as, like, the disciplinary. Right? I know, I know. I used to play my parents like that all the time. My mom was a cool parent, but my mom was a, the very reason that I would do a lot of shit that, that wouldn't have led me down this really fucking toxic path if I didn't do, right? I was scared of my dad. I was scared of my dad. I'd make sure I did all my shit before he was home from work because he worked in the oil field, right? We were in Saskatchewan, he was never home. My dad left for work, I'd go out be a fucker. A few days before work, I'd be the best girl ever. <laughs> I'd be the bestest girl. <laughs> My room would be clean. <laughs> Everything. So, I mean, those instills of toxic traits, okay? Me thinking I could get away with shit. Thinking my mom was so cool. Okay, it kept me stuck for a very long time. A very long time. Okay. 
just by having that avenue open, right? You got you have to lay down the law and you have to be strict on that law. And it's not like leave your kids inside, never let them go with, out with their friends, da, 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 da. No, let them do that. But in a safe way, in a way where they know not to fuck around. Okay? Okay, so that's why you back each other up when you're like, Doing rules. Freaking Tristan's like what? Miles and miles away. He's in uh he's in Vancouver. He says something to Parker, I, I make sure it happens and I'm he wouldn't know. He wouldn't know if we were to or not. And we do. Because he made it vocal to Parker. So if anything that day we're doing that. Okay, that's something that's sticking. Even if our day's jam-packed, we're doing that. That's like when I'm making the list, the priority list in my mind, that's at the top of the list. If that doesn't get done, well, then I did something wrong. And I need to explain myself to Parker Interested. Okay, and then sometimes our kids don't listen because they're karmic. <laughs> because they're karmic. What makes a karmic child? It's like um, maybe they have some sort of defiancy problem. Okay. There's kids out here today that are like diagnosed with defiancy problems. They're, oh, I've diagnosed them. They're just defiant. What? The fuck kind of diagnosis is defiancy? That, 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 whatever fancy words you choose to put behind it. Why is defiancy an illness? It's like it's like a it's like a brain thing, right? It's a brain thing. But why can't you explain it? And then and then and then you're going to say it's it's um what? What is it? <laughs> um this is a karmic child. Okay, this is a karmic child. How do you get karmic children? You fuck with magic. <laughs> you fuck with magic. Or somebody who's linked to you fucks with magic. Okay? And you need to get your spiritual protection higher. You need to go let this kid, bring this kid to a healer who can heal them from that. Mm hmm. Yep. Say your say your mom did it back in the day. Your grandma does it back in the day. Like, like then you have to protect your kids on a spiritual level, on a spiritual level. And people think that. Um, I don't know why people think healers are are not real. Like they need to do some research, right? Researching back in the day how we kept people alive back in the day. Okay with the power of like energy, what's energy, vibration, okay, healing touch, um, the sound, like that's how, that's how people were kept alive back in the day when there wasn't schools to train people as doctors, right? When there was just villages, that's it, that's it. There was no papers, pens, whatever, right? There was fucking birch bark and berries. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, if you if you got a carpet child... <laughs> You take them to a healer, okay, and then you, you intentative, intentatively listen to what that healer has to tell you, okay? Have an open mind. Have a really open mind, and shit will change drastically, I promise. If you go see the right person, the right healer, I have, I have, Brenda Hansen is a really great healer, okay? Next reading today, I'll bring out her card, okay? But her card is in a readings back. Okay. So that's kids don't listen. Okay. The next one is apologies. The next one is apologies. I'm getting guided to grab a deck. This one. Yes. 
sir. <laughs> sir. My son says that, right? He, he calls everyone a he. Okay. So I'm a he. So if he's talking, say he's talking to my parents, he's talking to my mom or my dad, he's like, um, he's in his room, right? Mommy's in his room. <laughs> Mommy's in his room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, somebody feels like they missed out on their opportunity at the, at a heaven sent. It's like, I've been praying for this. I've been praying for this type of love my entire life. I've been praying for this type of nurture my entire life. I've been praying for this type of love to have a child with my entire life. Vroom. Who fucked up their heaven sent? <laughs> Who fucked up their peace? <laughs> or this is like a karmic child. <laughs> or this child isn't even yours. Or this is someone trying, this is an energy vampire. Dressed up as a steady offer. Someone could be like, ah! alligator tears. <laughs> and then the other person's like, nope. I was getting um, Gage, Gage, Gage. So that could that could be a name, but it also could be um, instrument, device for measuring, and then magnitude, amount, contents of something. but I underlined magnitude. So like, there's, oh, okay. Sorry, I do that lots. People, I don't know who, I don't know who thinks that's funny when I go, ooh. <laughs> um, but when I when I get something, I, I like talk, I talk, I try to understand it, and then it comes to me, okay? And that's when I do that. <laughs> Somebody understands the magnitude of this situation, okay? Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Remember the other day how I was talking about, oh shit. Okay, I was talking about these, um, this other investigative unit. That's not with the RCMP. I'm getting the RCMP, the RCMP lied. The RCMP lied. Okay, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Let me get this, let me get this. Someone's weighing out the magnitude of this situation. Okay, this, this group of investigative group, this investigation, investigation agency, sorry. I need to calm down. This investigative agency is apart from the police, but the police need to work together with this investigative agency. Okay, so standard procedure, I'm hearing standard pr procedure, they have to gauge the, the magnitude of this situation, okay? When they're digging into this situation, the magnitude is like fucking underlined, man. Okay, and they're having to question these police officers and they're like, it's just standard procedure. But they're understanding how connected, how in it, how much of an inside job this really was, the magnitude of this situation, okay? The contents of something, okay? The amount of something, how far it went, okay? typically on display okay so this is going to be on display to prove a point right to prove a point that you don't do this even if it's just against one person you don't fucking do this damn gauge Oof. standard procedure Oof. yes you took this person's money and then attacked them on every level. It doesn't make it like there's no honor amongst thieves, <laughs> right? Cop or not, cop or not, lawyer or not, judge or not, <clears throat> clear that, judge or not. You collaborated together 
you worked together. There's evidence here. It's all laying out on the table. It's on for visual display. How grounded this person is, how they've had to protect themselves, how you put them through the, like you drug them through the mud. Okay, not only their name, but like physically you put this person at risk. Abuse on psycho a psychological level. Abuse on like a mental, physical, fucking spiritual, emotional, any type of abuse, financial, any, and name it, you name it. You, you fucking name it, man. You name it. You worked on it. And this person's very direct and very in control and you're angry about it because you're confused on what to do. Okay, you wanted this new beginning, you gathered to have it, but this person bossed the fuck up. They are a nurturer, they do care. So that's Gage. <laughs> oh shit, standard procedure. Okay, apologies, apologies, apologies. What's apologies? Okay, so when, we're, when we are working on ourselves, when we're being very honest with self, okay, um, we're gonna come across moments where we feel like a piece of shit, <laughs> okay? And, but we need to forgive ourselves. And in order to forgive ourselves, we have to do some apologies, okay? And we only do these apologies when um, it's like damage control, right? But sometimes if we were to go back, it would do more damage that would be out of control, okay? For, for our own healing. <clears throat> and for the person that was hurt. Say, say I brutally attacked someone, it's probably the best idea that I don't go up to that person's face and apologize to them, right? Probably. That's just common sense. So like understand who to apologize to, okay? If you're scared of that person's reaction, that if I'm scared, say, say I, lied on someone's name and I made them look like a piece of shit parent, okay? And I'm just embarrassed and I don't wanna face them. That's just being a coward, right? That's just being a fucking coward. That's just not wanting to even do any damage control. That's just being a coward, <laughs> okay? But that, so that's not a case of it would, it would do more damage, right? That's just me being a coward. <laughs> so there's a difference of really it not being a great idea and really me making it be not a great idea because I don't want to have to face something. Okay, so when we work on ourselves, we need to apologize in order to forgive ourselves. Okay, we have to be humble. We have to recognize our wrongs. We have to know where we went wrong. Okay, so this is something you do after you've thought about it and you've thought about it again in a centered space and you've thought about it again in a centered space and you've thought about it again in a centered space. Like when I'm centered, it comes to me that that's who I need to apologize to. I'm sorry for being so toxic. I'm sorry for linking you to a certain group. I'm sorry for attaching your name to something toxic. I'm sorry for not helping you when you were in a dark space. I'm sorry for lying on your name in order to keep you depressed. You know, like, like these are like, and actually like meaning it, actually being able to go into detail, like, I, like I'm sorry about this. And I, like, I, like I was thinking, like if I were in your shoes, what, what, what? Give them something, give them something. If you can't, then you haven't thought about it enough. If you can't, then you're not sorry. 
Okay, and, and sorry without change is manipulation, period. Like, done. That sentence is over. Okay, you need to recognize that just because you choose to apologize doesn't mean that that person will accept it. Fear. Like, <clears throat> and it'd be narcissistic to think that they need to. Like what, you're not going to accept my apology? You're too good for that? <laughs> like, you know, no, 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 no. Sit the fuck down. That person has every right to make their own free willing decisions. Okay? This could be a fear of yours. <clears throat> because this person's in their power. But this person's also a nurturer. This person's also understanding. So this person has a really good gauge on lies, has a really good gauge on deception, has a really good gauge on fear. Like if you come to this person fearful, I'm pretty sure this person would be like very graceful in order to make you feel comfortable. Okay, because there's a certain amount of respect that comes with the truth. There's a certain amount of respect that comes with an apology that comes with being accountable. <clears throat> okay, so this person is humbled. God has humbled them somehow. Whether it be keeping them stuck in a toxic cycle for a long time until they started to love themselves or whatever. Whatever this person had to go through to be humbled. Everything taken from them. Humbled. Wise, direct, a nurturer, responsible, accountable. So it's not like you're trying, going like, it's not like, or maybe this is the energy you need to have in order to get over this fear. <clears throat> okay? You got to come correct. You got to come correct. And if you don't, then why would you ever accept, expect this person to accept it anyways? If you're coming to this person with lies, deceit, half-truths, right? You don't think that person will pick up on it? You don't think that person will think know that you gathered in order to paint this illusion, this lie, this deception? So just because I decide to apologize to someone, I have to be okay with the fact that they may not accept it. I have to be okay with the fact that they might have an outburst and I might need to turn my back and walk away. That's not on me. Their reaction is not on me. Okay? They're, they want to secretly, like behind the scenes, they want to be able to lie in order to avoid a tower. <clears throat> They want to lie about <clears throat> this money, this independence. Ooh. They want to like say that. They're going to push the blame on someone else. They want to avoid the tower that your authenticity proves to be a lie. That this woman manipulated them, painted a picture. This is their, or this is their protection. That this woman painted a picture. What, you didn't do your research for yourself? You didn't look into anything? You just blatantly believe these lies and push it and push it and push it and push it for no reason no financial reason at all bullshit 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 it's funny how like these huge crimes against humanity these huge rico crimes these huge fucking terrible terrible crimes happen and they place blame on one person so one person goes down that doesn't get rid of the evils that is this entire situation. That's some bullshit.
Okay, I'm gonna do a don't sweat the small stuff and I'm gonna close it out. I'm gonna spend the, the morning with my kids because that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm like really susceptible to this shit right now. <laughs> okay, so I was gonna look for, ah, fuck it. I'm gonna do a random page. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Angel number 20. Excuse me, I burped. This is an exercise that has helped me help to change many lives. Assisting people in becoming more peaceful and loving. Okay. Taking a few minutes each week to write a heartfelt letter does many things for you. Picking up a pen or typing on a keyboard slows you down long enough to remember the beautiful people in your life. The act of sitting down to write helps you feel, fill your life with gratitude. And even if you're surrounded by people, <clears throat> places, things that are toxic, um, you can visualize that, okay? And you can focus on that, keep that your focal point, and, and literally, like, manifest that into existence. Just ignore everything around you. Ignore it. Ignore it all. Once you decide to try this, you'll you'll probably be amazed at how many people appear in your on your list. <clears throat> and it could be like the idea of someone. Say you like the idea of me. Say you like the idea of someone on TV. Just the idea of them. Okay? You can write that person down too, right? The idea you the, of the teacher you had in kindergarten because they were like so nice to you. Okay? The idea of them. Because that idea of them is true to you. <clears throat> okay. The act of sitting down to write helps fill your life with gratitude. <clears throat> and, and it's so important to be grateful. It's so important to be grateful. <clears throat> I remember writing a gratitude list. Clear that. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I should have paused the camera. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like a tomboy, right? I always have been. I've always have been like a, like a, like a boy's girl, right? My friends growing up were dudes. Um, yeah. I was more friends with the dudes than anything. That's why I didn't have like a boyfriend till I was like real old. <laughs> well, not that old, but like 16, 15, right? I wasn't a young kid. Like, uh, I wasn't a girly's girl. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. I wrote a gratitude list when I was in the shelter, the first shelter that I went to. And when I was going through all this, like getting my kids taken, um, being charged and being looked at a certain way and whatever I was going through, I lost everything, right? I lost everything that meant something. Um, and more. And my, my list, <clears throat> My list was like, it consisted of, of shelter, food, water, love, hope, things like that, faith, okay, because that's what I had to rely on back then, okay, clothes, right, and we got, uh, we got, uh, I didn't have any clothes, and we got these um, gift cards from the thrift store at our shelter. So we got to go to the thrift store and buy clothes together. And that was fun. That was fun. I'm getting that like, so you went to, oh. <laughs> okay, I went to go drop my clothes off at the thrift store like I, I go downtown and I donate my clothes every once in a while often actually okay because that was a very sentimental thing for me 
right back in swift current when i was getting fucked with there anyway oh i forgot to bring up swift current the other day when i was lift listing off places anyways this shelter was in swift current um that was that moment we set to bed till to me, right? It was like the first fun I had in this like shitty experience. Anyway, so I donate my clothes often. I'm getting that when I donated my clothes, okay? The bin that I donated in, you can't really open it unless you work for the people, right? It's like, you can't get into it really, okay? So I'm getting like people are going shopping to the thrift stores that these clothes are going to in order to get my pieces of clothing, which is weird. And that could be true for you as well. If you were one to donate your clothes. <laughs> people are weird. Okay, once you decide to try this, you'll probably be amazed at how many people in on your list I had one client who said I probably don't have enough weeks left in my life to write everyone on my list this may or may not this may or may not be true for you but chances are there are a number of people in your life or from your past who are quite deserving of a friendly heartfelt letter even if you don't have people in your life to whom you feel can write go ahead and write the letter to someone you don't know instead perhaps to an author who may not even be living whose works you admire or a great inventor or thinker <clears throat> from the past or the present. Part of the value of this letter is to gear your thinking towards gratitude. <clears throat> Write the letter, even if it isn't sent. Writing the letter, letter, even if it isn't sent, would do just that. Yes. And like, this is like a lot of people who have lost a loved one to like maybe traumatic events, maybe um, an illness that came out of nowhere, maybe a cold flu that came out of nowhere where it wasn't expected. <clears throat> In these moments, we, we, We didn't see it coming and we acted as if it wouldn't ever happen, you know? So there's a certain amount of like surprise when we lose these types, like in, in due to these types of situations, they'll, people will get you to write a letter all the time. Okay. In order to get those last words, those last, like, like it feels like those last moments were stolen. So in order to get over that, you need it. You need to be able to express that in a healthy way. Okay. Because, because getting messed up and talking it to your friend all drunk isn't healthy. Okay. It's just not. Or getting messed up and speaking it to like someone else that's not healthy it's just not okay you don't feel like that person heard you you actually feel like you gave another person a bit of that person just by sharing that story right feels worse it feels worse and I know because I've been through that when I share that part of me that part that's so special to somebody else and how are they supposed to accept that? How are they supposed to respond to that? How are they supposed to do anything for that? I feel like I gave them a part of that and made it less special. I don't know how to explain that, but I've totally done that before. And I just like, I felt like a I felt like that person was undeserving of knowing that part of me. Um, that's making me emotional. My like, I can feel my voice changing and shit. I just, I wanted to get off of that. 
I'm gonna get off that topic. I need to blow my nose, so I'm gonna pause the camera this time. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. So writing a letter and yeah, I burn my letters, okay? I feel like, I feel like I don't want anyone to see it. I also feel like if the smoke rises up to the ethers, they get the message, the intent <laughs> of getting the message to them because smoke rises, right? Fire also like purifies, right? Smoke purifies. So it's a whole, it's a whole ceremonial kind of thing for me. <laughs> it's worked for me and it's worked for many people, so. The purpose of your letter is very simple, to express love and gratitude. Don't worry if you're awkward at writing letters. This isn't a contest from the head, but a gift from the heart. If you can think of much, if you can't think of much to say, start with short little notes like, Dear Jasmine, I woke up this morning thinking of how lucky I am to have people like you in my life. Thank you so much for being my friend. I'm truly blessed. I wish for you all the happiness and joy that life can bring. Love, Richard. Not only does it, not only does writing sit writing and sending a note like this focus your attention on what's right in your life but the person receiving it will in all likelihood be extremely touched and grateful often this simple action starts a spiraling love spiraling of loving actions whereby the person receiving your letter may decide to do the same thing to someone else or perhaps will act and feel more loving towards others Write your first letter this week. I bet you'll be glad that you did. Angel number 58. Angel number 23. The number 23 keeps coming up, so that could be like, angel number 23 is like relevant. 33, eight, 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 eight. <laughs> uh... Okay, have a good day, people. I'm going to go chill.